at that point he crossed the line and, and, you know, maybe he got some payback, some blowback. That's what happened. You do bad things, bad things happen back. You know, what goes around comes around. You could run on for a long time, as the famous song says. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. You can't keep going forever. Well, note to self, you know, clean up all bad habits immediately, please. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, I mean, that's it's the bottom line is going to always be uh, your prayer life, your, 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 your relationship with the Almighty God through Jesus Christ. It's always going to be that relationship and that, that, that vector of prayer that is going to make that difference in terms of you consistently getting through versus winding up as the you know, proverbial bug on the windshield. It's, it's, it's the Lord's got to lead us now. We are in that valley of shadow of death. It is a precarious, the United States is a precarious place right now, very delicate. It's just hanging, it's just balancing on a little fulcrum, you know what I mean? It could go either way. And uh, so we just got to keep praying. We have to pray strongly. I, you know, I pray for this, uh, for the healing of the nation, for the healing of the United States and all nations in the name of Jesus, and for true cooperation to come in Jesus' name, amen. True cooperation between nations, that is. Uh, that doesn't mean a, that doesn't mean utopia because we all, all have the flesh. Getting rid of the bad guys won't solve the problem because we still have the flesh. We are still the bad guys. So, you know, we have the potential to be good, but we go back and forth and back and forth because we're of flesh. So we need that constant check and recheck on our spirit, check and recheck on us because any of us could go off the rails. You know, all this kind of teaching though, moral instruction, moral philosophy and such. The place for that was the pulpit. And this has become a temporary pulpit here. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. I, I, I guess I'm a, I'm a speaker. I'm not really a pastor because a pastor has a flock. I'm not, the Lord has not assigned me to that. I'm, you know, a voice in the wilderness, if you will. That That's kind of what I've been. And, um, it will continue, but I mean, this this voice, the, what I'm saying today, would be very welcome in, in days of old in the pulpit. That's where it, that's where this kind of talk belongs, in a not a bully pulpit, but a pulpit where we're trying. We got to have a real emphasis on prayer, real emphasis on praising God, real emphasis on on the Lord, as in terms of the solution to our problems. Because in the end of the day, I could say I'm going to break that habit. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to be a nice guy. I'm going to be a mensch here. I'm going to do this, do that, do the other thing. But the problem is, unless I have a real true change in the spirit, you know, that, that that's what we're looking for. Because, you know, in the spirit of God is love, right? And love is, you know, self-sacrifice and things like that. These are the things that, that, that make, you know, a... a, a a great society, you know, this kind of regard for others and this, you know, careful that, you know, if you make a mistake, you apologize, you know, you try to, you know, that doesn't mean you're friends with everybody, you know, people betray you and you have to kind of put that aside and go on to something else. And that happens too. And that's fine. As long as you don't hold a grudge, you know, there are people in your life that are probably toxic, that are draining your energy or that are out to get you or, you know, they're big friends to you, but if then you turn your back, they're going to get you. Yeah, you'd be better off without that in your life, but but not to hate them, just to understand that they're attract, the darkness attra- is attracted to the light. So if you're walking in the light of the Lord, you know, you may attract dark figures who would, who would just as soon knock you off that path. It's just always going to be that way. There's always that challenge and there's always that warfare. Sometimes it gets exemplified through other people. It gets rather manifested through other people. Other times it's within yourself. It's like you go back and forth within yourself. And, uh, but always, always with an eye to, to eradicating sin, right? Always with an eye to doing better with the sin. Not, not perfect, but just keeping on with a good, good, good try. That's what the Lord expects to keep good, to not just give up and go, oh, I'm a sinner. Okay, go ahead. You know, and I'll just go ahead and sin. Uh, you know, keep on after it. And I know that creates 
uh, sometimes a bad self-image. You know, I keep trying to beat these sins and they keep beating me. And, and I'll tell you, that's the, true for all of us, folks. But we still, the, what the Lord expects, I, I could just, I, I'm going to talk for the Lord right now. You know, so 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 if this is not, the, if you don't believe this, that that's fine. You know, do your own discernment on this. But the Lord expects us to, you know, yes, the whole world is, is off the world's evil. You could call it hell, whatever. But the Lord expects us to get up and try to make it better, to, to be led by him. It's impossible, Lord. Oh, if you lead me, Lord, all things are possible with you. Yeah, let's go. We've got you. The heck, these, all this, this pedo networks and warmongers and drug dealers, it doesn't matter. We've got you. We've got you. We can clean it up. We can fix this. I pray for the hearts and minds of the young people to be changed to the living God in Jesus' name, amen, and revived. I pray constantly for the, for the, for the children to wake up and realize that they've been, they've been had. If, They've been told the material world is nirvana or whatever. You know, they've been had. I pray for them to wake up. To wake up and understand that, you know, if you are in the living God, if you are in Christ, it's all good. It's all good. It's That's where you want to be. That's the path that leads to eternity. That's the path that leads to everywhere. That's the path that leads to all your inner dreams, your heart. You know, the Lord is your heart. The Lord has your heart. The Lord's within you. The kingdom of God is within you. If God be for you, who could be against you? Back to Isaiah. Um, you know, it's going to be Isaiah 41.10. I have it just listed here from my King James. Oh, that was on the other thing. Okay, so I need to get to uh, there. Back to uh, Isaiah. Oh, okay. Back to... Uh, I don't know, it's hard for me. Okay, so I guess... Uh, All right, so they're not letting me in. Well, anyway, let's go to, uh, okay, fine. You know, I, I can't believe they do this to me. When I need to get into my Bible, I need to get into it now. Come on, guys. Knock it off. Isaiah. Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Can you believe how long the book of Isaiah is? Can you believe it? Go. All right. Fear thou not. Okay, well, it's the famous Isaiah. Uh, this is what I was led to uh, put on my little Twitter feed today. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You know, uh, don't be dismayed. I put that up there because I just have to remind myself. It's like a little pinch, you know. Don't fear, fear thou not, and don't be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed like I was yesterday, right? I came back out of it with that that scripture helped me today. How many times have I relied on Isaiah forty one ten? A million times. <laughs> you know, I like right like Psalm twenty three, it's like a million times. Hey, you know, Psalm ninety one, a million times. But it's like it's like Isaiah forty one ten, it's like fear thou not, for I am with you. Don't fear because I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. Don't be dismayed and then and then add Sermon on the Mount to it. Don't worry. The Lord has your steps. The Lord don't worry about them, the world. 
The Lord has your steps. The Lord has your ways. His ways are above our ways. His plan is above our plan. We can't comprehend his plan. There's no sense in trying to comprehend it. You're just going to short circuit like I did yesterday. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. How could people do these things? And the answer came at night because they're hypnotized by the world system. They're hypnotized. They know not what they do. Jesus said it best. They know not what they do. Of course they could vote for communism with a 4.6% growth rate and, and, and lots of food around and lots of opportunity around. And they could throw all that away thinking they're doing, you know, they could kill you, a child of God, and think they're doing God's service. That's what it says in, in you know, John says that. Uh, you, you know, he said the, the time will come where they'll kill you and they believe they're doing God's service. They, they're doing God's work in killing you, a, a child of God. Where they think if they kill the real children of God, they're actually getting rid of the devil. They'll do that too. So they did it all throughout history. So we can't just sit there and marvel. Do not marvel at it. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. I just did, a, did that yesterday on the podcast. I was like, I don't understand. It's beyond my pay grade how people could. Well, it's, it's already answered. The day will come where they'll kill you, and they, they're they going to say, aren't you proud of me, Lord? You know, I mean, the, it, it gets to that level. So, yes, everything is contradictory. Nothing anyone can get their mind around. Nothing makes any common sense at all. And they're just going to go ahead and do it. The evil thing, the throw away, the, the, the kill the goose that laid the golden egg, because they know not what they do, because they're hypnotized. They're traumatized and hypnotized, but whatever they are, they're not here. They know not what they do. If they did, they wouldn't, hey, if they did, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. They don't. So they crucified Jesus. They'll kill the goose that laid the golden egg. They'll kill God's children, believing they do God's service. They will, they will give comfort to the enemy feeling like they're being good people. And then the enemy will kill them. And they say, why are you killing me? Because I'm the enemy. It's the same story as the snake story that Trump would tell. You know, uh, because I, they're just going to do it. But they, it's, I don't think it's completely personal. I just don't think they really even understand what's going on in the role they're, or the role they're playing or being forced to play through their compliance and free will uh, and through their free will consent for Satan to hypnotize them into a you know semi demonic zombie state where they can just approve of anything. Yeah, put those Christians to death. <laughs> Yay, I'm a good guy. And they actually will believe they're good people. It won't be until the day of reckoning, that day of recompense, and then they will know they were not good people. In that last twilight moment, they will realize that they'd blown it. Many, though, without that day of recompense, without that day of the Lord, many come and go believing they're good people when they've led horrible lives. A good life is simply a life of following God as best you can without being perfect. A bad life is doing the opposite. That's the way I define it. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bad life for that person, isn't it? It's a bad life because that person never got to do God in those tough moments. They had to they had to fend for themselves, and, and when they had those tough moments, they were just, what, what does the worlder do? The worlders de desert each other when they go through a tough time. What happens? They're not going to call you and say, oh, "I'm sorry for your loss," or. They dis oh, I'm sorry you got cancer. They, they disappear. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we must not lament. God is great. God is love. God is bliss. God, the, the pathway is beautiful. It's as beautiful as when I wake up and I see this out here. Thank you for giving me more time, Lord. I know my time's coming to an end, and I know I'm going to have to, you know, pass at some point. You know, I know that's coming, you know, can come sooner rather than later. It can come any time now. I understand that. I understand that, but I just want to behold your beauty 
your loveliness, your your perfection, your perfect justice, that all things are as they should be at every moment of every day. And it's this weird thing we're in. Uh, they want my... <laughs> my dog is barking at the coyotes as usual. That's why I'm in here sequestered and uh, speaking here instead of speaking from Studio B, which I'd love to be at, but I got to reset that up today and I, I, I was gone and I got back and I never really set my, I just got kind of like drained and a little bit confused and, you know, kind of like it just went through a lot of attack and, uh, you know, as much as I try to, you know, bind up the attacks and give them to the Lord and ask the Lord to help me, Still, I guess we go through different, you know, there's been this trouble of feeling mm, very down with the world, very, uh, very, uh, you know, like maybe what I do doesn't help or, you know what I mean, that those kind of thoughts and feelings usually come after every podcast and it makes it very difficult to get, to keep going with, with the things I need to do during the day and, and to, to push on with my life, you know, it makes it very, very difficult, uh, this invisible blowback that happens, you know, and uh, and I I know some, someone told me that means you're doing something right, and I said, well, okay, then, but but you know, is is there a deleterious effect on health? I mean, I'd like to have a better outlook in terms of you know, I see a beautiful sky, or a, my dogs are beautiful. Their their time is coming. Eli's time is coming very quickly. I don't know who's going to go first, me or him, but you know, it's uh. Um, I'll just put it this way. I'm all for eternal life, you know, and I'd like to be in eternal life with my loved ones. I'd like to be in eternal life with the Lord. And uh, this idea of the living and dying and losing people and friends and children and, and, and dogs, and I just, that cannot handle that. <laughs> and no matter how many times I go through it, I just seem to always be in mourning about something. And, I, and I'm trying to have a day where I just say, Lord, that's your beauty. It's so wonderful. I do that in the morning. Before the podcast, I seem to be able to look at the sky and look at the moon up there and, and say, praise you, God. You know, just, you know, I, I can't wait until you take me to see this whole expanse out there to be like the stars shining forever and ever to see everything that you want us to see. We're stuck here and just kind of like, they tell us to look at their telescopes and things so that they're all accurate and wouldn't it be nice if we could just go with you and you would show us everything? Yeah, man. It's going to happen. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. Uh, I will see you next time. Love and prayers to all of you and uh, those who, you know, agree or disagree. Uh, if, you know, if you're polite, I, you say what you're going to say about things. I've, I, I still don't see... Some of you, we have a disagreement that, and, you know, it's just going to be a disagreement, a polite disagreement. I don't mind that. It's when people are trolly that I, I don't have time because I just don't have time. You know what I mean? I've I've got to make each moment count here on earth. You know what I'm saying? So I, I cannot imagine someone having a life as a, as a troll or, you know, going around just, you know, I've never myself really, every once in a while I might say something negative on, on a Twitter feed, although I'd probably get rid of Twitter pretty soon. But, um, I, um, can't imagine how awful a life it would be if you were like a, on a troll farm and your job was to go after people that society deemed unfit or the wrong kind of thing or the wrong message. And they, yeah, you have to go in and start trying to, you know, uh, shame them or harm them in some way. I, I, it, to me, that's so abstract. I, I can't imagine that that would be a life. And people that do it without getting paid, oh my, what a chump! I, I can't even imagine why people would want to go trolling around and 
calling people all kinds of names and things when, when they're not even getting paid to do it. I mean, where's the positivity? Where's the proactive forward motion of that person's life? You know, and there's plenty of them, and they're, they, you know, they exist more in the political realm, but also the, the spiritual realm is, you know, religion realm, I suppose. And, they, you know, they want to get in fights about scripture and doctrine and, you know, some of them, and some feel they're doing the right thing and trying to educate people. And it's like, eh, just let God be God, you know, just let God be God. And we're subject to that. People are going to have all kinds of opinion about other people. Everybody is evil. They're the devil. You know, a lot of good people have been maligned as bad people. Bad people have been pushed up as good people. This world is just so topsy-turvy and so so chaotic. But I'm going to go look at the sky again. I love you. See you next time. Okay. Mm, the house of Israel. Mm-hmm. And let me tell y'all Gentiles something. You don't have to be an Israelite to receive the blessings of Yah. If you understand who the true chosen children are and you support that, the Most High will bless you tremendously. He did it with Cornelius. He did it with so many others before us and before you that you receive your blessings, man. Just because you're a Gentile, that don't mean white. That means all different ethnicities. They understand what's going on. They understand truth. You are going to be blessed tremendously. You understand what I'm telling you, right? So what I'm to, I want you to understand something here. That's only going to be a small percentage of Gentiles that make it. Why don't you be a part of that rim and be a part of the Hebrew culture of the one third? Because the most high getting ready to rain blessings. And you're going to be right there with us. But we can no longer keep trying to uplift the two thirds because they're going to bring us down. And that's what Satan knows. Now, I'm not saying that to say this. When a young man get out there and he's flipping and flopping, hold him. You ain't got to take care of him, but just hold him until some help come his way. That's all you got to do. Don't be foolish and record his his demise. The most high can't stand a black man that make fun of another black man that's having trouble. 